Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a very grindy black-white mid-range deck featuring the full set of Sarah Paragon, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 4-mana 3-4 Mythic Rare Angel with flying, saying once during each of our turns we may play a land or cast a permanent spell with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard, and then when that permanent is put into our graveyard afterwards it gets exiled and we also gain 2 life, so we can't necessarily recur the same permanent over and over again, which makes sense. So this deck is optimized to leverage Sarah Paragon with a full play set of Selfless Samurai to protect it the turn we played, can be sacrificed to give another creature indestructible until end of turn, and then it conveniently ends up in our graveyard where we can get it back with our Sarah Paragon to protect it once again. And then we can also potentially give attacking samurai or warrior creatures lifelink until end of turn if they're attacking alone. And our deck actually has a decent number of samurai and warriors if you count Graf Reaver and Tenacious Underdog as both being warriors that can definitely benefit from the lifelink as they both lose life. Then we also have the full set of Extraction Specialist, which is another key card in the deck, a 3-mana three 3-2 three lifelinker that when it enters a battlefield can return a creature with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. That creature cannot attack or block for as long as we control the Specialist. So once again, the synergy with Samurai is excellent, as we can bring it back with our Specialist and then sacrifice it at any point, and it doesn't necessarily have to be attacking or blocking to be useful, can also still grant the lifelink ability. And then getting back an Extraction specialist with Sarah Paragon in turn getting back a selfless samurai means if we sacrifice a samurai it doesn't get exiled since we got it back with a specialist instead of Paragon so we can set up these ridiculous loops where the opponent basically can't ever kill anything unless they can somehow exile our creatures instead so it can be very rough for some decks to deal with. And then speaking of rough, we also have the full set of Spirited Companion, a 1-1 that when it enters a battlefield it draws a card, another great 2-drop that also lines up well against opposing copies of Liliana of the Veil. If they make a sacrifice, we're more than happy to sacrifice our companion. Not to be alarmed, we can bring it back with Specialist and Paragon, so no animal cruelty on this channel. And then a Liliana of the Veil, we're also playing ourselves as a great Planeswalker that can pressure control decks by using the plus one and eventually threatening the ultimate and against creature decks we can often minus two several times or still set up a nice two for one and Liliana is a permanent with mana value three or less so we can indeed get it back with Sarah Paragon which is also quite powerful and then we also have the full playset of Tenacious Underdog, which is one of the best 2-drops in Standard right now, with Creature Lands being gone, still gives you access to a nice late-game mana sink out of the graveyard, thanks to Blitz, and we can easily offset the life loss, thanks to all the life gain from Samurai, Specialist, and even the Obscura Storefront, which has awesome synergy with Sarah Paragon. We can play it early to fetch up a Swamp or Plains, gain one life, and then later, once we play Paragon, let's say there's nothing else in the graveyard, or we maybe play Paragon turn 5, and we don't have the mana to play 2-drop, well, we can still play Paragon, replay or fetch land, which also counts, and then it will get exiled in the process, but also gain 3 life total, thanks to the Paragon's ability, so that can also pad our life total nicely against aggressive decks. And then the full set of Graph Reaver as a 2-mana 3-3 three, three with Exploit. And then if we sacrifice a creature to Exploit, we can potentially destroy a Planeswalker from the opponent. So another answer to opposing copies of Liliana of the Veil if they get out of hand. But also just a 3-3 three, three that can apply a bit of pressure, sacrifices itself. So has great synergy with Specialist and Paragon. But we can also sacrifice other creatures like Companion to it to keep the bigger 3-3 three, three in play if we just want to beat down. And as we mentioned, a Warrior to go with Samurai. And then the full set of Rite of Oblivion is the real spot removal in our deck. As an additional cost, we have to sacrifice an all-land permanent to exile target an all-land permanent. can also be flashed back out of our graveyard, so we can cast it twice. And between all the graveyard recursion, we can easily sacrifice one of our cheaper creatures to take care of an opposing problematic permanent. And then at 3 mana we also have some additional card draw thanks to Morbid Opportunist, a 1-3 saying whenever one or more author creatures die, draw a card, only triggers once each turn. It's also great synergy with Selfless Samurai that can be sacrificed at any point to potentially give Indestructible and draw a card with Opportunist. Graph Reaver can also be great with Opportunist as it will potentially sacrifice a creature to exploit and draw a card. And then we can also get it back with our Sarah Paragon. And then Liliana making the opponent sacrifice also lines up well with the opportunist card draw. 
And then finally two copies of a Night Clubber, which can be blitzed as well to give it haste. And then when it enters, gives opposing creatures minus one, minus one until end of turn, since our deck is pretty weak against go-wide token strategies, as we mostly have just spot removal and sacrifice effects. So sometimes it's nice to have a way to clean up all one toughness creatures with a Night Clubber. And even against control, we can still blitz it to draw a card, can also blitz it out of the graveyard with Sarah Paragon for what it's worth. So that's another neat synergy. And then our mana base has the full set of Caves of Koilos and Shattered Sanctum, plenty of basics to fetch up, and then the Channel Lands, Iganjo, and Abandoned Mire, which is a way to potentially get back Sarah Paragon so we can set up the entire recursion loop once again. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, our hand's missing a second black source. Can we keep? It's a little bit risky for sure. Although any third land lets me blitz Night Clubber, so we can draw, so I'll try it. Fetch turn one. Opponent with a Cult Conscript, and there's our land, so wouldn't be able to play Liliana, but at the very least we can blitz Night Clubber. Opponents got their own underdog. Okay. So, yeah, let's blitz. And then I could attack with underdog, since next turn we can bring it back with specialist. And then we're set up for an opposing Liliana by having two creatures in play at the same time. And then hoping for a second black source soon. Fable of the Mirror Breakers, their opponent playing Grixis Colors. And do we want to trade? Sure. Alright, so we can play Paragon, although won't be able to get any immediate value from it, including our fetch land, so I might be better off Playing another underdog for now. So we'll attack. Play underdog and pass. And then at the very least Paragon getting our fetch line back. We'll gain some life and get our second swamp. Opponent discarding another underdog. Shaman attacks. Yeah, I'm probably fine taking a trade here. Potentially lets them get back their conscript, but that's okay. Trespasser exiles underdog. And conscript comes back, so they're protected against Liliana a little bit. Yeah, we'll probably play Paragon. Get our fetch line back. And then just stay back. That way if they kill Paragon we can at least trade for Trespasser instead of having them exile more stuff. And then we would love to untap with Paragon, play a specialist out of the graveyard. Night Clubber would also be decent, killing the Conscript we can Blitz again. Huh? Opponent with Sorin at 4 mana. That's okay. I can Blitz Night Clubber and then maybe hit him with a Liliana as well. As long as I keep Black Man available here. So let's see. Night Clubber, Paragon at Sorin, Underdog could go face, or I could leave it back. Yeah, maybe leaving it back is fine. Opponent can save Sorin 
if they double trump. And that sets up our Liliana to get rid of something useful. Samurai is not bad either, although our opponent might be playing Meat Hook Massacre as their removal spell of choice, which would kill through Indestructible. And then now we've got an underdog back to potentially block theirs. And then next turn we can maybe set up our specialist as well. Dire times call for dire tactics. It's gonna be their own Liliana. A fight? And you think you can win? Kills underdog. You ever heard of personal Maybe a second Liliana coming up. Nope, just another Fable. So Sarah Paragon stays. And uh, yeah, we can play a Specialist with it. Get back Underdog. Kill Sorin. That sounds pretty lovely. And then uh, Liliana can probably plus discarding another Liliana. Maybe start there. Opponent stop decking, and uh, yeah, that seems like the play here. What's one more grudge? Question here is whether we keep a land in hand for the opposing Liliana, but we're probably fine to play it out. And our opponent scoops it up, yeah, too much value from our Paragon, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, missing a white mana. So this one's pretty sketchy if we don't find it soon. Can play a Liliana or Opportunist with any third land. I think I'm still gonna give it a shot. We're pretty likely to find a white source in two draw steps. And at the very least have a Liliana on three. Opponent Junt Colors and looks like a Sacrifice deck. Can be tough if we don't find our Rite of Oblivion. But at least we hit our third land. So now what? Could Liliana and start plussing. The minus is not going to be very effective against Anvil. But yeah. This seems fine. And then maybe discard Companion since we can bring it back with Specialists. And then we also have the play of potentially playing Opportunist, minusing a Liliana and drawing a card right away. Opponent discarding a Massacre. Synthesizer finds Riveteer's Charm. Luckily for us, they can't cast it right now. And they found a Swamp as well, but they already played land for the turn. But they might have a different removal spell here. Voltage Surge kills Liliana. Fair enough. Still wasted a lot of the opponent's resources as we pick up a fourth Specialist. We definitely want to try and uh, trade off this companion as much as possible. So now, probably just attack and then minus Liliana. If they were to trade somehow, I guess it would have been nice to have Opportunist in play, but yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, so maybe I should just not give them the choice whether or not to block. Has to leave. And then we would love an extra white source here to play Paragon. More two drops to go with the specialist would be fine too. Of Nixilis without any sacrifice, so just a one copy making a devil. 
And a Voltage Surge once again taking out Liliana, but her opponent's down to one card in hand now. And there's the white mana. Okay, so maybe now's the time for Opportunists. And then attack Obnixilus with Specialist if they chump. We get to draw. And they're gonna take out the Specialist, makes sense. Okay. Probably gonna try and wait to play Paragon and get immediate value, either with a fetch land or maybe a cheaper 2-drop we can play. Happy to take some damage. And braids, okay. Potentially gonna force us to sacrifice stuff. Pun going for a land. Yeah, I guess we can get immediate value from our Paragon now. Yeah, we'll play Paragon. They don't have an immediate way of answering it. So they would have to top deck one. And if they plus Obnixilus, I might just want to discard Samurai since we can easily bring it back with one of our specialists. Opponent copies the Devil Token. Okay. Well, that's gonna trigger Opportunist here, end of turn at least. And uh, can sacrifice Companion if we'd like. So they might be doing us a favor. And we'll sacks to itself to enable the second copy, which can now start making constructs each turn. But we've got a ton of stuff in the graveyard to leverage. And uh, where do we want to start? Probably want to play Samurai to get some protection in place for Paragon. And then Specialist bring back Companion sounds decent. Opponent probably just wanted to make some tokens to protect from Liliana's minus two, which makes sense. But uh, yeah, this also seems decent. And at some point we'll draw Rite of Oblivion to get rid of Braids or Reflection Anvil as well. They don't have enough mana to meet Hook Massacre, kill Paragon. So maybe a Blood Tithe Harvester would be the biggest concern now. Token attacks. Can block with Opportunist. Braid's also attacking. Well, they probably drew another copy, but I can block with Specialists. And then I guess I can just soak up the damage from the Devil Token and sack Samurai to make this indestructible. Since the Samurai is not going to get exiled, whereas um, the Specialist would. This could also be bait to kill Paragon, but we have another one, so I don't really mind too much. Get to trigger Opportunist. And another Braids, as we suspected. So we can just sacrifice Companion if we'd like. And then bring it back with another Specialist. Okay. Next. I think play a Specialist from hand to get back Samurai so it doesn't get exiled. And then I can play a Liliana as well if I'd like. Sure. And then if I minus, they can sacrifice a devil to finish off Liliana. 
there's still a second copy in the graveyard, so maybe that's fine. So we just get rid of the devil permanently. Or they can sack an artifact here and keep the devil to go with braids and reflection, Sacrifice which is fine by me. These two can attack. And we'll pass it back. Would still really like a Rite of Oblivion to put the game away, but our opponent scoops it up. Just too much value here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Could really use an extra land or two. So not the best Liliana of the Veil hand in that sense, even though discarding Underdog is a fine option. Yeah, this might be a mulligan. Okay, well, we'll try this and then can bottom one Graf Reaver. Fetch a planes. Opponent on a red aggro. So dealing ourselves damage with Graf Reaver is not the best, but at least puts a body in play. Put onto a very low curve deck with an Iron Apprentice as well. And Rabbit Battery. Okay, no lanes, unfortunate. Oh, we'll attack and play another Graf Reaver. There's also etching to worry about, potentially exiling our creatures. Which could uh, nerf the power of specialists. Right, voltage surge. Still kind of a two for one here. Opponent hits us for five. Okay. Now probably fine to Liliana minus and stay back with the Grand Freever. Make them commit resources to killing Liliana. And potentially play another one. Opponent is stuck on two lands, so the plus from Liliana could be quite punishing. Synthesizer finds a play with fire, which can deal with our planeswalker. And then probably just take four. Alright, Samurai is not bad since Graf Reaver is a warrior. So it can help us gain some life here. And at least Samurai we can sacrifice without it being dealt damage. So we can actually bring it back with Specialist. Voltage Surge. Yeah, let's uh, sacrifice here. That way we guarantee a target for Specialist. Samurai also very synergistic with Opportunist, if we can get both down. And the reinforced Ronin. Okay, so we're taking 7 down to 4. Now down to 3. But uh, Specialist should be pretty strong here. And we get to gain three with Reaver. Keeping Iganjo is reasonable as it answers etching. Although if they equip battery that's no longer the case, but for now it's probably better to keep in hand since it also doesn't necessarily enable double spelling. Okay, play with fire. Gonna force us to sacrifice Selfless Samurai, potentially. I want to gain the life in the process. Still at a precarious 6 life, with Graf Reaver also damaging us. At least infantry is not going to grow right away. And we can block battery and survive. Ok, 
Okay, another specialist get back Samurai, allows Reaver to gain more life again. I think that beats Liliana Minus. And our opponent explodes. Alright, the double specialist special. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is keepable. Opponent's blue-white. We'll fetch a planes here. And if we're gearing up for a control matchup, we would love to find Liliana of the Veil and our Paragon. Specialist also pretty good in the matchup. Can probably stop drawing lands now. Alright, Specialist is good. Can combine it with a Samurai to make for a nice combo. Opponent ramping with Celestus. If our opponent's packing farewell, that's gonna be a problem card for us. Could get a Nightclubber blitzed just to draw a card. Next turn I can double spell Samurai plus Graph Reaver. Can maybe take out a Planeswalker if they present it. So yeah, maybe a blitzed Nightclubber's fine. Looks like they might have a bounce spell for one mana. Morbid Opportunists, it's pretty good. Another source of card advantage. Opponent lets it transform to Knight. Could see Wandering Emperor in our future, which we can finish off with a Graph Reaver. Then having the Samurai in play, once we play Portunist, also means we can add instant speed to draw a card at the very least. Opponent's gonna go digging with Deluge. So yeah, Farewell is definitely our biggest concern, a sweeper that exiles and also gets rid of our graveyard. Opponent discarded Fateful Absence earlier, now discarding a land. It's gonna be a restoration for now. Okay, I think step one's probably to attack. And then play Opportunists. And we can play around a Make Disappear by playing a land first. That point's gonna Exile Samurai, we'll sacrifice it in response so that it's at least in the graveyard. Although this kind of makes me think our opponent's setting up a farewell. And then we're not going to be left with a whole lot, as we're holding a bunch of lands and a specialist without a target if our graveyard's exiled. It's going to be a depopulate instead, at least that draws a card. And now specialist can still bring back maybe a selfless samurai. Paragon's nice too. I think we'll save that one for a little bit later. Specialist is dissipated, so actually exiled. But we've got another one. And, uh... Yeah, I think I want to get this Samurai in play to help protect Paragon from another Sweeper.
So maybe next turn we can play Paragon and get back Opportunist. Opponent's ready to flash back Deluge, which is gonna go dig pretty deep to find an answer, including the dreaded Farewell. That resolves, get back Opportunist. And our opponent's gonna go digging. Opportunist resolves. And uh, yeah, no attack, so we'll pass. Back to daytime, opponent gets to loot. Architects attacking. Can set up a double block Paragon Specialist. Let's say they have Wandering Emperor to put a plus one counter on it. We can still make Indestructible and kill it, so that seems fine. Right, it's going to be March Exiling Paragon. Do I want to sack Samurai to protect Specialists is a question. Not necessarily. It would draw a card with Opportunist, but we're going to draw anyways with Specialist dying. So I'm okay with this. And then hopefully our second Paragon resolves so we can get that engine going. Right's not bad either. Maybe we can get right countered by another Dissipate by sacking, I guess, Samurai now. The only downside is I wouldn't be able to play Paragon and replay uh, Samurai since both my lands come into play tapped. But yeah, I'm kind of concerned about a potential Dissipate. And I guess we could always draw a land of Opportunists. Right would be a juicy Dissipate target as it would get exiled so we can't flash it back. And yeah, opponent pulls the trigger. So we get to resolve a Paragon, but didn't draw the land to get back Samurai, so it's not going to be protected. But given that we drew another one, it's not the end of the world now. And we'll get some uh, value for fetch land at least. So the game goes on, we've got a Paragon in play, another one in hand, but our opponent's also holding a full grip. Architect attacking. Probably just soak up damage with Paragon, although now a Wandering Emperor would be a concern. So probably just have to let it go. Even though if they flash an Emperor, I could play a second Paragon and then Graf Reaver can get the job done. Another Deluge, not what we wanted to see. And another March for X equals 4. So that's our second Paragon they exiled so far. Good thing we have a third. And then Specialists get back Samurai. Probably the play here. Don't have too many basic lines left in our deck. Which also means we're gonna be more likely to draw relevant spells. Okay, still crossing our fingers not to face Farewell. But if they're prioritizing March on Paragon, they might just not have many copies in the deck. Instead, maybe favoring Depopulate as the cheaper sweeper. Deluge number three. Still has six men available. Halfway through the deck. Architect attacking. We're gonna make the same block as last time. Maybe if they have both a Wandering Emperor 
and a fateful absence, they can catch us off guard here by killing the Paragon in response to us making it indestructible. But our opponent orders specialist first. And yeah, march number four here is it? Yep, exiling our Paragon. So yeah, that happens. At least they don't have any more copies left. But we also only have the one Paragon left in the deck. And now we're drawing a few too many lanes. At least I Ganja deals with Architect. A Liliana could maybe help pressure the opponent's hand, but now with all the 1-1 tokens, the minus 2 is not too useful. Opponent discarding absence, so they probably have answers to it anyway. Opponent attacking with the team. Line up some blocks. There's a Wandering Emperor. Ready to lose. Could actually kill the token they're about to pump and keep Samurai around in case they have a depopulate. Yeah, since we're at 30 I don't feel too threatened by Architect killing us, so we'll save the Samurai. There's Underdog, now that's a useful card too in a control matchup. Although now I'm kind of regretting not killing Architect. Another Samurai. So let's start here. And then Blitzing Underdog's just gonna draw me two cards now with Opportunist. Even if I don't get to attack with it. So I probably don't even want to turn it sideways and have it exiled by another Emperor. Even though that would gain life with a Samurai. So it is actually worth considering. Yeah, maybe I should still attack. Because if they want to waste another Wandering Emperor... Just to exile an Underdog when we're probably going to draw another one soon... That's fine by me. Opponent blocks. Gets to make an extra 1-1 one -one, I guess is the downside. But now I get to draw right away to maybe still cast another spell. Like a Liliana. Okay, could even Blitz Underdog a second time in the same turn, although it won't trigger Opportunist. So we'll try a Liliana. And we'll start plussing. No more distractions. Put in Deluge's in response. Okay, so now we finally found a few card draw engines here. Underdog with Opportunists is great. Liana to pressure their hand. But our opponent gets to dig pretty deep to find answers. And I'm still concerned about Rocket. potential farewell. As the Populate hits the bin. Not great against Double Samurai. But at least we've got a backup Underdog. Could be a match that ends up with someone decking. We're about halfway through the deck. And our opponent put a few cards on the bottom as well with Deluge. At least we got rid of four copies of March. There's a farewell, sadly. Can draw with Opportunist, only triggers once each turn. But since they didn't exile graveyards, I can put both Samurai in the graveyard at least. And they also didn't exile the underdog now, so that's probably why they said oops. Guards, to me. At least that's one farewell out of the way. And double Liliana means we can Edict both creatures, and Blitzed Underdog finishes off Wandering Emperor. Off you go. What a grindy game. This is my home 
This is probably one of their main win conditions that we just dealt with. And then uh, might as well play a companion first. Right, Ryan's not bad either. I guess I can get rid of the Celestis here. Sacking Underdog, which was going to die anyway. Okay, so we've reduced our opponent to zero non-line permanence. And one farewell down, although there's probably a second one at least in their deck. Opponent flashes back Deluge. So they probably have seen their entire deck by now, if we count all the cards they put on the bottom. They discarded a few copies of Absence, so I don't know how many more answers to Liliana they have. For now we can plus discarding planes and then maybe blitz double underdog. Could have also played our land first and then blitzed underdog. Although that might have changed their opponent's decision on what to discard with a Liliana. Probably don't need the extra land as another depopulate hits the bin. They might have a Wandering Emperor, so let's just play both. That works. There's Farewell exiling our graveyard. So yeah, hopefully that's their last Farewell. The fairy would like a Graph Reaver to answer it. So, three cards in hands, double Farewell gone, and another Underdog is excellent. Okay, so now we can probably play out most of our hands before plussing Liliana. Uh, two lands untapped, so don't need to worry about Dissipate. So let's play Samurai. Blitz Underdog. Gain some life. And then I guess play Specialist with no value. And then plus Lily. Another Teferi discarded, and Underdog draws, finding a Nightclubber. Teferi's plussing. Okay, time for double Blitz probably. Also want to wait on activating Liliana in case they have a Hullbreaker Horror that they want to flash in to maybe finish off Liliana. And then probably both three powered creatures at the ferry. Rest can go face. It's going to be a Wandering Emperor exiling Underdog. Just underwhelming. So we've got one left in the deck. You're done. And another Wandering Emperor, okay. Opponent's running out of win conditions very quickly here. But I'm going to end it. Gonna make a samurai. We must protect the people. And we can sacrifice our samurai to keep specialists. And then we'll plus to get our last card. Not the right, not bad. So we'd love something cheap to sacrifice. 
another deluge, okay. So how many deluges are left? Not too many. That was the last one. But yeah, how is our opponent planning to win the game is the question. Underdog, awesome. So I can blitz underdog. Hope it doesn't get dissipated. And then could minus Liliana on the token. Could also write and then blitz underdog again. And her opponent explodes. Wow, what a grind fest here against blue white control. But yeah, black white got it done thanks to the recursion from underdog in the late game. Once we got rid of all their exile effects, sweet onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is missing a two drop. But I think we still keep. And then any two drops gonna be awesome with double specialist. And the Liliana as our interaction to start out. Let's see what we're up against. Looks like a Junt deck and Samurai was a nice turn to play. So now we've got something to potentially get back with Specialist. Harvester we can take out with Liliana. Don't really expect any haste creatures, so I'll attack. Another harvester. And voltage surge finishing off Liliana. Still got us a nice two for one. Okay, we'll attack with Samurai, kind of hoping they block. So we can play Specialist and get it back. Opponent might be playing Meat Hook Massacre, which Samurai does not help against. Opponent passing with 4 mana. Not exactly sure what that means, but we can attack with Specialists. That's step 1. Our hands could be better, but we'll probably just play double Graph Reaver here. And uh, yeah, I guess now I'll sack Samurai instead. So we can play another Specialist to get back Samurai and keep our Life Linker. So we're applying a nice bit of pressure and then hoping to find a Sarah Paragon at some point to secure the late game. But for now, Specialist is doing a great job. Opponent Riveteer's charming, finding Fable and Liliana, but they'll only get to pick one. And we still have a leftover Graph Reaver in case we need to take out a Planeswalker too. So it's gonna be Fable. And there's our own Liliana, perfect. So we'll kill the token here. That way our opponent potentially won't be able to get access to double black, because it's possible they have a Meat Hook Massacre in hand and then eat the treasure token to cast it. So by killing the Shaman we prevent that. Although the second chapter of Fable also still somewhat likely to give them double black. Still seems fine. One's gonna go digging with blood tokens, discarding a double black card. So yeah, Meat Hook Massacre seems likely to be in our future, so I might want to hang on to Graph Reaver instead of going all in. <laughs> Off you go. One's at six. 
and then in response to massacre we'll sacrifice samurai so the opponent doesn't gain as much life they found a double swamp and just a harvester okay was definitely expecting a massacre here well that's good plenty of life to spare and another samurai so probably empty out our hand attack with a team and that should be game with double samurai to protect And our opponent explodes. Awesome. It's a nice quick beatdown draw featuring Specialist, which has been amazing so far. And we got to level up. Alright, so we got to see our black-white value mid-range deck in action. And we managed to beat everything from the most grindy blue-white control deck all the way to mono-red aggro. So it has the tools to pretty much handle all the decks that I'm facing right now, although I'm sure the metagame still needs a bit of time to settle down. But for now, this seems like a nice choice if you happen to open a few copies of Sarah Paragon, why not give this deck a try? So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.